platform. Um, and here in Ohio, we've stripped away the local government funding and and other resources to build up this piggy bank uh, down in Columbus. It's it's what's referred to as the rainy day fund. I'd like to see that money allocated to set up statewide rehab clinics. Um, I'd like to decriminalize usage, uh, which is a, a movement that's going on right now, a, a constitutional amendment here in Ohio. Um, and my opponent sits on this so-called uh, HOPES Task Force, which is to address uh, heroin and opioids. And nothing has gotten any better. It's just false promises and looking at a problem that's been going on for 12 years when we've had Purdue Pharma and Cardinal Health based out of Ohio has been flooding the market with these with these pills and uh, nothing. We had nobody watching what's going on or any safeguards in place to protect the people of Ohio. And that's a trend all across the board here in the state that when only defunded uh, all of the state's protections for individuals and stripped away labor unions, then we created such a massive health gap here in the state where people turn to uh, turn to drugs or lost jobs and turn to drug use. And it, it's really going to take a massive social investment to fix the problem. Is there anything else that you want to make sure that we talk about, uh, about your campaign or your district? The most important thing I've been stressing is uh, we want, in my district, uh, walkable neighborhoods. We want a clean environment. We want uh, the future to invest, talking about smart future investment. I know a previous couple of years, uh, universal broadband access. Like a few months back, signed an executive order to allow self-driving cars in Ohio, and it prevents any local municipalities from preventing the company from driving through their town. And that's just a recipe for disaster here in my district, which has a lot of walkable communities. Uh, so I want to see that we have the streets with a smart grid approach, uh, our signs, not just our stop signs, stoplights, but our walk, uh, caution walking signs be updated to communicate with, with these self-driving cars because this is you know, less than 10 years away and we have no investment into what our infrastructure needs to look like for this. Also, I want to invest in a water treatment plant that aggressively Treats sewage uh, and prevent and and to stop dumping from next door power plants uh, to help clean up our waterways and cut off obviously farmer manure runoff into into the western basin. Um, it, it's almost like there's so much that I, I want to accomplish with with how much has gone wrong in the state. If our listeners would like to help you in your campaign, how can they do that? Obviously, we take any, any support. Uh, my website is Casimir for Ohio. It's uh, C A S S I M I R F O R O H I O dot com. Um, you'll find resources to contact me, to donate, and anything else uh, about me. Uh, obviously on Twitter at Casimir for Ohio, Facebook, Instagram is the same. And I really love to to chat with the people in the constituents. I did a a Reddit event not too long ago, and and that was that was really fun. All right, excellent, Kelly. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. It was really great to talk to you, and I love Northeastern Ohio. So I I am really hoping you're able to get in along with a, a wave of other great Democratic candidates that we see up there right now. Oh, thank you so much. I hope so too. Hi, 
I'm Sarah. I'm Rachel. We're sisters. And we like to talk about books. But not the kind you talk about in English class. Sci-fi, fantasy, YA. All the good stuff. You like Harry Potter? We've got you covered. Just don't tell the Ministry of Magic. We might be breaking the Statue of Secrecy. How about Frank Herbert or John Scalzi? Don't forget Octavia Butler, Lainey Taylor, Rainbow Rowell, Marie Lou. Hey, don't give all our episode ideas away. All right, I guess you'll just have to listen to our show to find out more. Unassigned reading. We discuss the books you are never going to talk about in English class. Our guest tonight is Jeff Richards. He is running for the Ohio State House of Representatives from District 66. Welcome, Jeff. Well, thank you, Sophie. Thank you both for having me. Pleasure to be here. It's wonderful Um, to have you. Lucky number 66. Yes, Route 66. It's the old TV show. (laughs) And I just want to jump in and note that we've now had the challengers for 66, 77, and 88 in Ohio, so... If you're out there and you're challenging in 55 or 44, give us a call. (laughs) Or 99. (laughs) Or 99. (laughs) So, Jeff, why don't we start off by asking you to introduce yourself a little bit. Sort of who are you and why have you chosen to run for Statehouse? All right. My name is Jeff Richards. I've uh, lived in southwest Ohio my entire life. Uh, I've lived in Claremont County, which is the uh, part of District 66 uh, for the past 20 years. I basically stood on the sidelines and uh, watched as the Republican Party has put in economic policies that have really hurt the uh, middle class and, and, and really hurt the poor. I was an economics major at uh, uh, University of Cincinnati when, when I went to school, which was a few years ago. I watched them, uh, watched the Republicans try over and over again the uh, trickle down economics and have seen that it doesn't work for the majority of the people. It works for the top one or two percent. And we, you know, the rest of us are left for crumbs. Unfettered capitalism creates an oligarchy. And we're sort of seeing that where the top one or two percent have everything. And we, you know, we get the crumbs left on the table. But uh, the real reason I guess I uh, have uh, really ran is the opioid crisis here in uh, Claremont County and in uh, Brown County, which is the other county that I cover. It has been a real epidemic here, especially Brown County and, uh, Clare- and Claremont, because they're both sort of rural poor, and there's very little for uh, young people to do. In fact, uh, Brown County has had more percentage of opioid deaths than any other county in the state of Ohio. The opioid crisis has really affected me in a very personal way. Four years ago, my oldest son had an overdose and uh, died. You know, I I really want addicts to be treated like a mental health problem. I think we need to treat them as patients, not prisoners. It's time for a change, and I think we need to make that change. That's the, that's the reason I really got involved, and now a lot of other things that I've learned since then have really helped me on my way to uh, trying to uh, know what the real problems are for the, the people here in my district. We see the education system here in Ohio has been taking a real hit by the charter schools. Just in my two counties, it's over $8 million over the last over the last five years that the uh, charter school, the ECOT, Electronic Classroom of Tomorrow, has taken out of their systems and basically stole because nobody graduates from there and nobody ever goes to college from there. And uh, the only person that really benefited from it was the people that organized it. They made millions and millions of dollars. Of course, the um, the uh, Republicans that got all their campaign finances back to them, that also helped them out. So those are the main reasons I'm running, and um, I feel like it's time for a change. The one the one party rule has created you know a lot of uh, corruption in Columbus, and we see it over and over again, from the ECOT scandal to the the payday loan scandal, which uh, had the uh, Speaker of the House resign under FBI investigation. It's just become a cesspool of corruption up in Columbus, and I think it's time for us to change that. First, I just want to say I I think Kelly agrees here and would say the same that we're very sorry for your loss and 
I know that the opioid epidemic is a huge problem in Ohio. Kelly and I are both originally from Northeastern Ohio, where it's also been a huge epidemic. Several people I graduated from high school with in a small high school have died of overdoses. I was yeah. wondering if you could talk a little bit about your plans to address the opioid epidemic. I really like how you talk about you know, not punishing addicts. My husband is an addict as well. I've, I've spoken about this on the, he's in recovery, but he's an alcoholic. And so I know the importance of treating addiction as a mental health issue. So I'm wondering, especially, you know, sort of in light of the restrictions that Ohio has recently placed on opioid prescribing, maybe the plans that you would have for things you could do on the mental health end to help end the opioid epidemic. I would like to just decriminalize drug abuse. That would be one of the things that I would really, I, I think that, you know, when you, when you start putting pe- people in jail for abusing their body, basically, you know, you, you, what you're doing is you're making a career criminal. They go into jail, they learn how to be a criminal, they come out, you know, and it's, uh, it's what else have they got to do? They've got to be a criminal. I've been watching a, uh, a program over in Northern Kentucky where they're bringing in mental health experts Also, job experts, they're bringing in and making uh, people do apprenticeships for these people as they um, are are treating their their addiction. So, in other words, you get them, you know, get them through withdrawal. You get them into finding out what the problem is, why they are, you know, basically abusing their body and, and try to find them something to look forward to. I think something, some of the things that have happened here in Ohio is that you don't have, you, you have these kids that they don't have anything to look forward to. It's just, all it is, is, you know, they, they, they have no goals, no future. It's just to stop. Addiction is not just young people. We're seeing more and more people in an older age. In fact, I read a statistic recently where the uh, in, in Kentucky, the amount of the, the, the people over 65 were just as many as the people under 18, which really shocked me. I mean, I would have thought that, you know, that there has been a, a big increase in the over 65. What this is telling me is that people are getting hooked on these opioids, and when they can't get them anymore, they have to go out on the street and get them, and then they then they end up with the fentanyl and all that. The, you know, which you know, I I certainly think we should try to find a way to stop the fentanyl and car fentanyl into uh, be, be coming into our how, how into our into our uh, society. Now, and here in uh, Claremont County, we have the the opiate task force which has done a, a, a tremendous job here in Claremont County. Uh, the sheriff's office, the hospitals, mental health people all work together. We come together once a month. We talk, you know, they have done things like needle exchanges. They have, they have made announcements when, 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 the, uh, when the fentanyl is in there and everybody's overdoses. They're trying to get people out there. They, they, get, they get pregnancy tests. They give um, hepatitis tests. They're trying to bring these uh addicts into society so that we're not just throwing away a um a portion of society that's in some ways that's what i feel like it, the people that like we have a we have a sheriff up in the uh, uh, north of us who will not you know will not bring uh the narcan in to re- uh, to revive them he he basically has said that they, he is calling the herd you know and and i just think it's a terrible way to look at it and i think that we need to we need to use this as a uh, bringing them back to society not just throwing them away so you mentioned a little bit about the the district and where it is down in the very southern part of Ohio, bordering Kentucky. You know, I was looking the past few cycles, a Democrat has challenged, it's been the same Democrat for the the past three cycles, at least, uh, and has not done very well, has only gotten about 20% of the vote. And this is a, a fairly rural area. But I also know that this overlaps with the second congressional district where Jill Schiller is running and that that's considered to be a pretty competitive district this year. So can you talk a little bit about sort of what you're seeing on the ground, uh, how competitive it seems to you, what you think the people in the 66th House District are, are really concerned with? 
I'm glad you mentioned Jill Schiller. She's a fantastic candidate, and she's been very supportive of me. She came to my uh, campaign kickoff and fundraiser and spoke. She's done outstanding work, and I think she's had a real – I think she's going to win. I think she's going to win. I think my uh, district is much more competitive than it has showed in, in the last uh, cycles. You know, I know the man that, who ran, and he was well-meaning, but he didn't really work very hard. And, you know, I, I'm not – I'm not here to put him down, but, you know, he, he was a placeholder in some ways. I, I've been going out uh, to, you know, I went to the fairs and I, I